Good morning, my art gurus. Good morning. Thank you all for joining in and really great to be here with you for another video log. Now, if you notice me staring down, I've actually written a lot of information so that I don't forget as I'm speaking to everybody here today. In today's art conversation, I wanted to talk about monoprints and how you can create your own unique artwork with items that you might find around in your house. For me today, my inspiration uh, really arrived from one particular leaf that I found or was trimming actually for cooking, which was a sage leaf. Now, I generally have a art diary that I record everything in, and this is just to see where that thinking process goes. So when I found the leaf, I quickly did a, a monoprint within my diary and I thought, oh, I love it. Um, from that, somehow I um, got inspired to then, uh, you know, think on a, on a larger scale. So it's really important that the items that almost call to you, that, that um, attract you, uh, really do speak to you. Otherwise, you will struggle to create a, a piece of artwork that flows. It will come a little bit stagnant and choppy and you'll find it difficult to, to essentially complete it. So be, be mindful that you want to have that connection, that inspiration with a particular item that, that calls to you. Now from a tools perspective, um, I am using a 300 GSM smooth paper and this is Archer's paper. For this particular process using the sage leaf, I wanted to use a smooth paper only so that the um, actual veins of the underside of the leaf would print a lot better um, on the paper. Similarly, I am using these self-watering, and I hope you can see that against my black top, self-watering brushes. And the reason for that is that because I'm using a, um, a, a, a living thing, which is a leaf, I don't want to saturate it with too much water. It's quite easy to dip other brushes in water and in colour and then put it on the underside and it becomes far too wet. So in this process of using a, uh, a live material, like a leaf or piece of grass or, or anything like that, then I prefer to use a self-watering brush because I can control how much water comes in and out and also how much um, actual color I put on there. The color itself, I'm using Winsor & Newton and it's an acrylic watercolors, so nothing too, um, thick obviously otherwise again it will affect the way that you put the leaf on paper and I don't want it to smudge I really do want just that those veins to come out. From an application process it's really important that you consider how uh, you apply the pressure how even the pressure is on paper this is really important and you'll start to see as I start to put each leaf down. Um, colour harmony is also very important. When you're thinking about the objects around your home that you want to utilise, consider how to best apply them. Now, what inspired me about this particular leaf is its actual texture. And because down here in Australia, we're in the autumn season, I thought, how wonderful would it be to utilise the leaf and create a piece of artwork in the autumn colours, which is hence why in my art book I decided to use all the um, reds, yellow ochres and cool reds and oranges to create the testing pattern. So th think about your colour harmony. Also the colour combinations. Um, I know a lot of people don't put a lot of emphasis in this process but as an artist this is what always goes through my mind. Do I go down the route of monochromatic? <clears throat> Do I go down an analogous route or split complementary? By thinking about your colour harmony, then you're also adding harmony to your overall piece of artwork and, and what you want to, um, what the message that you want to convey through your art. Um, when you go obviously down the route of autumn colours, we're going down those orange, burnt umbers, raw siennas, yellow ochres, and thus where my mindset was at. So again, the object that you find, consider how it can be applied, what it, what's the shape that it has, and what colour harmony you want to apply to that shape. And lastly, of course, within all this process is think about the design. Whenever you're doing monoprints, monoprints, uh, from my perspective, I'm sure everybody else has got their own um, unique point of view, you need to have a certain design. And monoprints like to have uniformity. Um, if you do uh, work with the pattern, make sure that there is some flow to it. Otherwise, you'll find that the eye will either 
lead um, outside of the painting or it will escape the painting and you won't actually move around your artwork. So do consider the design that you apply based on the shape that you choose. So I'm hoping that that's enough information uh, for you to process and to take forward. Please feel free to um, certainly comment and add questions and ask questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them um, through this process. So go out, find your shape, and in the meantime, let me get started and set up and we'll start the process of creating our monoprints using a sage leaf. First thing I want to Thank say you. is the leaves that you choose with sage, they're quite soft, they're not waxy and, and they're not slippery. So when I apply colour at the back of it, um, the colour is able to stay and then I can do the prints um, accordingly. Now I've also chosen to keep the leaves fairly similar in size. I'm running out of them actually outside and these are the, 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 the biggest and one small one that I could get. Yesterday's batch had a lot larger leaves. Um, so hopefully this today's process will be um, equally as good. Okay, now I'm using Windsor and Newton um, watercolors, as you can tell. It's really really simple, and I'm using these self-administered water brushes, and they're easier to apply the water or the color to the sage, and then do the actual print. So here we go. Okay. The colours that I'm working with in this particular monoprint is yellow ochre and I think is, is a cadmium red and then there's a, um, a cool red in there. I don't really know what that's called in this particular range and a dark brown. Okay, I've just tapped also the, the remaining colour back on the tissue paper so that there's not too much excess water. I really just want to see the shape come out of, um, of this leaf on the paper. Now the other thing too that you'll notice, I know you're looking at it from, from the back side um, versus where I'm facing, is I'm attempting to keep, oh look at that's lovely, I'm attempting to keep the direction of the leaves in that same pattern. I don't really want them um, sticking out in any sort of way. So the whole aim of this monoprint is to have a uniform uh, pattern to it, uniform colour, and utilise the leaf as the main object of creating the print. Okay, so I'm going back into yellow ochre again, and again, lightly dab it. Don't overwork the leaf with too much water, as you can tell, and if you can see that. And we'll just pop it up here. I also like to overlap it, so if I've got a yellow colour, in this case, um, from before, I'll, I'll put this next colour on top of that yellow and gently just peel that off. There we go. So the whole idea is that I'm wanting to layer not only just with shapes, and in this case it's just one continual shape, however I'm also going to layer with different colours, the yellow ochres, the yellow, cadmium red, cool red and a brown to give us that random effect of what you see leaves fall um, on the floor during seasonal change. And see if um, I can use that other one. The other thing that I noticed with yesterday's leaves is that the sage leaves that I chose were fairly old and as a result they were a little bit dry whereas I think these ones that I've just picked are a little bit younger and they're a little bit more supple so I can't quite get that same effect. Okay we'll see what this one's going to do. Okay we'll just add that up here. And again, just a gentle press, but make sure that you're not moving it left to right or up and down. And lift it up by the stem. Oh, much better. So this is actually a much better leaf and a much better print. Mm, that's quite nice. I'm just going to switch it again and go to the cool red. I really want the cool red more to appear in that area there.
everybody find that process. I'm hoping that I have given you enough information and uh, ideas on what you could do without items within your household. To quickly conclude some of the main points, please um, reassess through every print that you make. If you're using a living thing like a leaf, every time you make a print, reassess it. Consider uh, where and how you should make the next print. Don't be too quick to actually apply every single leaf, otherwise you will lose um, the whole process and essentially you might lose the design that you've set out to achieve. Consider also the variety. Some of the leaves that you might apply colour to might be a little bit thick when you press them down. Then consider then that the next time around you want to have a lighter print. So that's also a, a note that you want to have in the back of your mind. Again, maintain your design, really, really important. Most important, of course, in all of these technical fundamental things on art is to have fun. Art is nothing other than fun. And if you find yourself having a sore back or agitated or you gain a brain fog, which is what tends to happen to me most of the times, walk away, have a cup of tea, take a break for 30 or so minutes and come back and restart the process. Start your art conversation today. Allow yourself to become inspired with things that are in your household and just create, truly start creating. Um, I thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already to my YouTube channel, please do. I will definitely be bringing you more videos uh, on art and art processes. And most importantly, remember, create, paint, and be you. There is an art guru inside of every single person out there. Again, thanks for watching guys. Until next time, bye.